Rodney Burnett and the Pirates last night and never looked back in a 9-3 win. Today, rookie Joe Ross makes his fifth career start. He faces Garrett Cole, who leads the majors and wins. The season series comes to a close in front of another capacity crowd at PNC Park. The Nets have won the season series from the Pirates, but now they want to gain a split in this four-game series. Hats off to our fans. They've been here all weekend long making noise, cheering yeah, for the Nets, baby. and they sure did enjoy themselves last night. Watching Ian Desmond and Michael A. Taylor and Gio do their things. A badly needed win, now a chance to gain the split today. And Ian Desmond's going right now as well as any hitter in baseball. I mean, he's made the adjustments. He's stuck to his game plan. He's getting an advantageous hitter's count. Every time we look up, he's 2-0, 3-1, stuff you didn't see early in the season. And since June 20th, get this, Ian Desmond, 10 for 19, a 526 average, four home runs, seven RBI, four walk. He's reached base safely in 14 of his last 23 plate appearances. We showed you last night. We'll probably show you again today. His head is perfectly still. He's seeing the baseball. He's letting the ball get deeper, not trying to go out and get it when you see the results. It's fun to watch Ian Desmond have fun playing the game of baseball again. Yeah, and showing some emotion in, the, in that dugout. He's over to three straight games, and who knows what might happen today. So Desmond in this series, five out of ten, and it all started with an opposite field home run at at home. Joe Ross, the rookie, 22 years of age. Garrett Cole's only 24. Great young pitching matchup. And Joe did very well against the Pirates. He got the Nats the first win of that three-game sweep. Yeah, June 19th. So we'll see how he does and how the Pirates adjust to Joe Ross. But it was an 11-strikeout performance, his first appearance against the Pirates. And it was all about the slider. I've had some Pirates coaches ask me about Joe Ross's slider. Well, they saw it on June 19th. They struck out 11 of them. And just by the swings and reading swings, it's it seems to me like it's tough to pick up. There's some guys at the major league level, you can see the rotation on their slider right out of their hand, but the Pirates on that night thought it was his fastball all night long. He was spectacular. We'll see if they make the adjustments today, and he's got his work cut out for him against the Pirates' ace, Garrett Cole. Yeah, the winningest pitcher right now with a 13-4 and record, 2.31, the ERA. He doesn't strike out everybody. The ball's in play. By the way, the Pirates in the old-time unis today, and Michael A. Taylor, runners in scoring position, that's what he's getting done right now. Two for two with runners in scoring position in this series, matching a career high with four hits last night. He's five for 15 in the series, hitting for power, stealing bases, and playing a really good center field.
streets are gay and the sun shines daily on the mountain top. I took a trip on a sailing ship and I reached Jamaica. I made a stop, but I'm sad to say I'm on my way. I'll be back for many a day. My heart is down, my head is turning around. Little Nats bluegrass sound here in the berg. I like it. Yeehaw. Talented fans. He's a picking and we're a grinning, especially if the Nats can win today and get a split of this series. It is a sizzler in the Berg today. Humidity is up in the 40s. It's 86 at game time and some breezes blowing, but the big flags out left center not doing a whole lot right now. The Nats hitting 252, fifth in the league in runs, fourth in home runs. Bryce Harper now is on a 22 game on base streak. 72 walks, the second most in the National League. He has 51 extra base hits. He has scored 64 runs. And Bryce in the series has been on base five times, three hits, and two bases on balls. Garrett Cole, third career start against the Nets. Yeah, fastball average is 96. Slider is best secondary pitch. He throws it 23% of the time, an occasional changeup. Last start on July 21st against KC took the three to one loss went seven and a third gave up three runs on five hits struck out six Royals who by the way got a whole lot better today Ooh. and walked nobody in 108 pitches Johnny Cueto going to the Royals. Wow. Yeah there's some teams in the central in this league pretty happy about that guy for the Pirates told me this morning that's three times we don't have to face that guy right they've got like nine games left with Cincinnati. I said the defense for the Pirates. Behind Garrett Cole, Marte, McCutcheon, Polanco, the outfield, Gung, Ramirez, left side, Walker, Alvarez, right side, and Chris Stewart gets the nod behind the plate. That Chris Stewart, first game of this series, he's made five errors behind the plate this year, but they got to give Francisco Cervelli off sometime. He's five out of 12 in this series. So the Nats have had 17 what you would call laughers or blowout wins this year. Joe Ross. 27 strikeouts, four appearances. He's averaging a lot of K's per timeout. What a great number that is, seven or eight every time he goes out there. Garrett Cole and at least teams. Six in a row, and he is 13 and four. And by the way, and it's a stat we don't bring up very often, but it can be significant on a day like this. 1.96 day earned run average. He can be tough to see. Here's Michael A with fifth. Five for 15 in the so far three game series. Left side, first pitch. Aramis Ramirez takes care of that. So, first pitch at 138. Six year veteran Chris Conroy has the plate. Gabe Morales, first base. Scott Berry, second. That's the crew chief. Ted Barrett over at third base. So Garrett Cole moved the fastball in, out, up, down, moves it all around, sit 92 to 94. He has 97, 98 reach back when he reaches back for extra with two strikes. He has huge intestinal fortitude. A guy that's going to battle you, fight you, but he'll work that fastball away to righties and then go a slider off it. He does everything well. He hits well, he bunts well, he fields his position well, and he controls the running game. Very well. He's a complete product, and there's a reason why he's wearing number 45. Big fan of Pedro Martinez, who goes into the hall today. Career record in two seasons of 34 and 16. Actually, parts of three years now. And Espinosa trying to bunt. That pitch was up, kind of sliced off the top of his bat, right back to the screen. Danny in the series, one for eight with a base on balls, 0 for three career against Cole. Matt Williams working Anthony Rendon back in there slowly but surely. Play one game, get today off, day game after night game. And Danny Espinosa back in there at second base. Close enough on 0 2 to be hacking. And you'll see the 96 97 with two strikes mostly from Garrett Cole. A 
Espinosa now getting back in. Trying to fight here on 0-2. Breaking ball diving under his bat. Two quick outs for Cole. Season series. Nats have won four, lost two. Outscoring the Pirates by a wide margin. So when they beat Pittsburgh, it's usually one-sided. The homers are even, even though in this series the Pirates have the advantage. No comparison in the starters. Look at that. A.J. Burnett responsible for a lot of that. And the Pirates have booted the ball around against the Nats. Bryce Harper one for three career against Cole. Shift is on with Gung up the middle. And Bryce trying to jump all over 95. Bryce won for five last night, but he hit four balls right on the nose. As good as you can swing the bat last night. That's why that three for 11, a little misleading in this series. Could be much better. He looks like he's locked in. Dodgers and Mets underway. Third inning, no score. How about this one? With Grinky and DeGrom at City Field. Well, let me just fast forward. Seventh inning, no score. <laughs> Breaking ball. That ball headed for the Clemente wall. It'll take that short hop and get up in the air a bit. Polanco has a good arm and he just threw out Bryce Harper. In fact, they've got three good arms out there. Well, you thought when it hit the fence and kicked up in the air a little bit that Bryce Harper had a chance, but a great throw by Polanco. There goes a the no hitter, by the way. And Bryce Harper trying to stretch a two-out double. You like the gamble. Just a great throw by Polanco. in the middle FB we haven't seen this yet from Polanco that was really an on target throw well you know it's a good gamble for any hitter with two outs to try to stretch a single into a double you're trying to get in a scoring position so you like the maneuver by Bryce Harper but watch the ball kick up in the air that's where I thought Bryce was going to be safe at second once that ball kicked but Polanco flat footed just kind of slings this ball in didn't take a crow hop and it was right on the money to Neil Walker. What a throw. Mm. I mean, you don't see flat footed throws like that. It's not that far out there, so it's not like a normal porch in right field, but the fact that he threw it flat footed right on the money was very impressive. And what did they say? Make a great play, lead off the inning. There he goes. Polanco, four hits, a homer, three RBIs in this series. And he went two for three against Joe Ross in DC. Right side, bouncer. And Ross just got to the bag. Polanco made that close. Clint's going to hold up the stop sign. Clint Hurdle, Pirates manager, he's on the top step. He looks back to his dugout. And it took all of one hitter for the Pirates. And we're going to wait a second. Good hustle by Polanco. Oh, that was okay. Close. 
Looks like they just got him. And uh, Quinn headed back down the stairs. Pirates are fourth in the league in batting average, seventh in runs. Starling Marte is hot, 12 for 24. Then you stretch it out over 41 at bats with 15 hits. He's had five multi hit games in his last eight. And he's had four hits with a couple of RBIs in this series. He can also run. His next stolen base will be number 20. I see the numbers on Joe Ross. Fastball average in 94, slider 84. Change up 88 six and a third last start against the Mets got the seven to two win gave up three runs on four hits and a ball rifled to center on a hop to Taylor. Martina with a seven game hitting streak with 13 hits. I said the defense for the Nats behind Joe Ross Den Decker Taylor Harper the outfield Desmond Escobar left side of the infield Espinosa Robinson right side and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. I think it's going to be key today for Joe Ross to throw that slider early in the count change ups early in the count because when a ball club strikes out 11 times against you they're not going to wait around for strike two today they're going to be swinging yeah. early very aggressive early in the count. McCutcheon in that game struck out his first two times up. And then hit a fly ball to left so 0 for 3 against. Joe Ross. Like the two guys in front of him, four for 12 in the series. With a home run, three RBIs. So their top three hitters in the lineup, including Marte's hit now. 13 hits in this series. McCutcheon. 25 doubles fourth in the league he's in the top seven and extra base hits and he's busted into the top eight in RBI's now hitting 60. See I like Marte in front of McCutcheon for the set the, the simple reason that. You know now you're thinking about a base stealer. With a legitimate RBI power threat in the box and you saw Joe Ross slide step the pitch before and kind of leave that slider up out over the plate. So you, you start to think about the runner when you know the focus should be 100% on the hitter who's one of the best in baseball but that, that's a nice move by hurdle I like Marte in front of McCutcheon. Yeah, it looked like McCutcheon was all in on a fastball there. Big hack and then 84 broke down and away. Target out there again. Runner on the move. Pitch up and away. Throw is right into the runner. And a good tag by Danny Espinosa. Ramos now 9 for 33, gunning down opposing base dealers. Well, Wilson Ramos got rid of that so quick. And his release is where he throws out Starley Marte. Decent jump by Marte. Little look back with the throw right on the money. Danny Espinosa with the tag. But watch how quick Ramos gets. Rid of this, and it was kind of a modified pitch out by Joe Ross. He gave him a good pitch to throw on up and away, cleared himself nicely done. 3 1 to McCutcheon. That's outside. He's aboard. And McCutcheon walking for the 50th time. Next up, Baramas Ramirez. Ramos Ramirez went 0 for 4 in the game that Ross started in Milwaukee, a 7 2 Nats win. Ross got through eight innings in that game. Oh for 4 in his debut last night, that double play ball he hit into in the sixth inning. One of the biggest outs of the night registered by Aaron Barrett, who had just relieved Geo. That kept it 5 2. Pirates would score another run in the inning. Then the Nats would blast their way to a 9 3 win on the Desmond and Taylor home runs. The 0 1. Right in there. So 
third baseman home runs. Quite a list chasing Adrian Beltre and Matt Williams in on that. Only one of those is a manager. <laughs> well, the Chipper Jones would make a great manager. Swing and a miss on a big breaking ball. He got ahead. 0 2. And then despite a base hit and a walk, no problem for Joe Ross. In the bottom of the first inning, Escobar, Robinson, Desmond, 4 5 6 coming up. PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Namesake of the ballpark here. Fourth day in Pittsburgh. We've enjoyed every moment of it, other than the final scores on Thursday and Friday. Hall of Fame induction ceremonies in Cooperstown today. A hard throwing lefty, one of the great right handers ever. John Smoltz, whether a starter or a closer, and Mr. Doubles, Craig Biggio. Uh, Craig Biggio, one of my favorite players. I put pine tar on my helmet because of him. I love the way he played the game all out all the time and it's the first teammate I've ever had going to the hall Pedro Martinez. Congratulations Petey. One of the best teammates I ever had period. Hard to think of a guy who played all three up the middle positions. Wow. And Garrett Cole a guy with impeccable control just put one in the middle of Escobar. Interesting. You trying to say that was on purpose? Just said it was interesting. Yeah, first pitch. Gets Escobar, and this is what it sounded like. Ah. Right in the kidneys, that can't feel good. Can't think of anything in this series that would have. No. Led to that and Escobar he, he is up on the plate and is susceptible to fastballs inside on the hands and around that part of his body. So the Nats have their second base runner and Clint Robinson steps in two hits. He's been hit by a pitch and walked a couple of times in the series but when he was hit that was a breaking ball. Lobatone in similar fashion. And that's inside one one. Just thinking about your comments about Vigio. How about a guy who caught, played second base, and played center field, making it to the Hall of Fame? He just, he was a gamer, the ultimate gamer. I mean, he ran every single ball out as hard as he could to first base, whether it was a one hop comebacker to the pitcher or a one hopper to the first baseman, every single time. His uniform was always dirty. He was the first guy out of his dugout every game to run his sprints and stretch. And was just a great influence not only on his teammates but everybody else in baseball that watched him play the game the right way. He was one of my favorite players. Whole career with one team in Houston. And he had offers to go elsewhere. One ball two strikes. In fact Biggio. He was at RFK Stadium when the Astros played the 
Nats. I think it was like a week before he got his 3,000th hit. A lot of us had a wonderful time getting a chance to visit with him and telling him how we liked how he played the game. And the best thing I can say about Pedro Martinez, obviously the record, the numbers speak for itself. He was the same guy before he was a Cy Young Award winner as he was after. In, in my experiences in Major League Baseball, I've seen more players that have had trouble dealing with success than failure, and Pedro Martinez never changed. He was the same guy from the day he got to the big leagues to the day he left. That's fantastic. Not bad for a kid brother. Huh? And one of the smartest players I've ever played with. He'd make a great big league manager. Robinson to the right side. They're going to take a shot at both, but it took a while to get the ball to second, and Escobar went in heavy on junk. And he and Des three homers in this series. Let's watch them all. The first one to right center field might have been the most impressive. That was a 98 mile an hour fastball. <laughs> and this one to the Nats bullpen, and the last one kind of wrapped around the foul pole, a little hook action to it. So 10 for his last 19, 526 average, four home runs, seven RBI, four walks. He's reached base safely in 14 of his last 23 plate appearances. Hmm. Stay hot, Ian Desmond. By the way, that ground ball right there is every hitter's dream that just got drilled by a pitch. Yeah. A slow roller where you're going to get on top of a middle infielder after you just got drilled so you can try to blow them up. You, you wish for that on first base when you get hit. Yeah, Escobar got in there all over Gung. Desmond won for four career with a solo homer and a walk against Garrett Cole. He got a pitch to work with there, 85, hanging up a bit. Good late tough clean slide right to the defender. It's also your worst nightmare as a middle infielder too by the way. Yeah. One oh two Ian Desmond late for ninety six. Pull with his second strikeout. Two outs in the second. Nissan will track it. Hundred twenty four strikeouts. In just under one hundred and twenty seven innings ninth in the league in K's. Sharply hit by Ramos right to the second baseman Walker and the Nats after getting a leadoff man aboard done quickly middle of the second shaping up as a good pitching matchup. Back in April, 
you might notice a significant difference in his setup on the mound now at this point in the season. Ross is now standing on the third base side of the rubber, a significant change from where he was setting up earlier in the season on the far left side of the rubber towards the first base bag. That change was made in early May at the suggestion of Paul Menhart and Chris McCulloch, two of the Nats minor league coaches. Ross said it was a bit of an adjustment at first. He had to adjust his target points to allow his pitches to end up where they wanted them to. But it's created more deception in his delivery because he throws across his body. Ross told me he feels like the ball is tougher to pick up now for hitters. It's made his breaking ball better. So an adjustment for him on the sides of the rubber that he pitches. And he feels that it's made him better overall. That he has been. Thanks, Dan. With our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. And strike one to Jung Ho Gung. He's had a good series. Five for 11 with an RBI. On a seven game hitting streak. It gives you a better angle. To right handers to the outer half of the plate with the slider. It's it's to anybody that's played golf when you. In the tee box and you go to one side it opens up that side of the fairway and vice versa. Same sort of philosophy. And he's standing right in the middle now but when he when he. Yeah see he's all the way on the third base side. This creates deception in an angle. I used to like that as a left handed hitter though because you could see the ball better I thought but for right handers it's tough. That's a tough breaking ball too. Two K's in a row on Ramirez and now Gung. First out Mercedes Benz will track it. Fastball in and then he started a slider right at him. Gunn thought it was another fastball and he broke it right down the middle. Good execution once again by Joe Ross. Neil Walker in this series, three for 13. Wasn't in the lineup the night the Pirates faced Ross in D.C. Well hit the other way going with a Den Decker good outfielder who can cover serious ground and you need that in this ballpark out there and left two outs. See lefties are hitting 300 against Joe Ross and righties 177 so that could. You know explain the angle he's created how it's a little more difficult being on the same side as a righty but the opposite side for a lefty you can see it a little bit better. There's Pedro Alvarez. Two homers, three RBIs in the series. Didn't start last night against the lefty Gio Gonzalez. Came in later, got a couple of at bats. Went one for two. He was 0 for 2 with a walk, a couple of strikeouts against Ross in Washington. 88. Pull the string on him just a bit. And the big power hitter way out ahead. Tries to paint the inside edge and he did just that. Seems like a Joe Ross out here. Every time you look up, there's two strikes. He's just filling up the strike zone. And I think last time out against the Mets, he left a fastball up to Wilmer Flores, which is really the only mistake he made the whole game in a crucial situation. Otherwise, he was lights out. Same pitch for strike three as he got for strike two, and Alvarez talks it over. With Chris Conroy, the home plate umpire. One, two, three. Three K's in the game for Joe Ross, up to his old tricks against the Pittsburgh Pirates.
As you enjoy our ball game today and the cold one to go with it. Look forward to Miller time later in the game. It's brought to you by Miller Light. I see red people still here all over PNC Park. They were loud last night, by the way. Attention, Nats families. If you're at the ballpark or if you're at home, Saturdays and Sundays this season are Harris Teeter Family Fun Pack Days. With every Family Fun Pack ticket, you can enjoy all you can eat steak and lobster while you watch the Washington Nationals or hot dog chips and a drink. For tickets and information, visit nationals.com slash family. That'd be cool, though, wouldn't it? We know what a true baseball fan would choose. <laughs> Matt Dendecker goes up hacking. So Garrett Cole gets through the first two innings on 18 pitches. Ross has only thrown 22. Pirate Parrot hanging out. Kind of like him, by the way. I know I have a, have a hatred for mascots, but I really. <laughs> I no really, I no really, scary <laughs> dreams about no, him. No, he's cool. Just chilling. He's got good he's, seats. He's green. He's not distantly related to the fanatic. He's a he? late swing away from not being a mascot, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Curveball outside. For not being anything. <laughs> Yeah, I like him. Good job, Byron. He's made his day. And now Dendecker pulls one to the other side, and what a pick by a fan with some leather on a hot one hopper. Nicely done, sir. Bring your glove to the game, get a souvenir. He has the absolutely wrong hat on, though, but we'll, we'll cut him a break. Yeah, he's not happy that Grinky gave up a run. Mets lead 1 0. Yeah, the scoreless streak for Zach Grinky over. Ding dong, the streak is dead. Then Decker takes one way outside. By the way, we know a lot of you were here Friday and Saturday, and some even Thursday. And for those of you who uh, maybe drove home a little early today, we just want to salute you for being here. And it's been great to have so many Nats fans in Pittsburgh all weekend long. That pitch away, Den Decker couldn't reach it. 96 strikeout number three for Garrett Cole. Topper shut, and WUSA nines first alert weather. The only weather forecast that gives you the three degree guarantee. Get the area's most accurate forecast. First alert weather only on WUSA 9 News. You know, looking down behind the Nats dugout last night after the game when, when Dan was interviewing Michael Taylor, it had a playoff feel to it. There were so many Nats fans that kind of converged right down by the dugout that after the interview, there was a big cheer. And everywhere you walk around town, it, it, this weekend has had a playoff feel to it just because there's been so many Nats fans here. It's yeah, been great. Joe Ross, one for 11, is a big league hitter. Michael A. Taylor will bat here in the third. Pretty good hack right there by Joe Ross. A little bit late on the 94, but not a bad pass. That was 97. He just turned around. That, that might buy him a slider right here, <laughs> two strikes. Let's see. Yeah, he made some contact on a ball in on him. Two and two with one out, base is empty. Good eye. Good at bat. And Joe Ross locked up on a pitch that might have been low. Instead, strike out number four. What a night for Michael A. Taylor. Four hits last night. And just a short compact swing the choked up approach feeling the barrel.
throughout the strike zone. So many times a hitter, you lose the barrel through the zone where it kind of drops, you get underneath the ball. But the fact that he's choked up, he's got a real short, compact swing down the baseball. And he turns some 98 fuzz around for a home run late in the game. And if you ever need proof that choking up a bit doesn't cost you any power. Yeah, right there. There you have it on that last swing. Somebody put that that was a Michael A. Tater, and I just totally missed that one last night. <laughs> He goes right center on this one. Outfielders watching it. See you later. He's done it again, and this time the other way. Michael A. Taylor's eighth of the year. The Nats are on top. There's a Michael A. Tater. As if on cue. On cue. Stay hot, Michael A. Tater. That ball was touched. McCutcheon took one step and watched it. Didn't even move. That's with their 96th of the year. And Michael A. Taylor with his ninth career. Eight of those this year. Espinosa goes up hacking. That's a base hit in the right. And that's big with Walker unable to get to it. It gets Bryce Harper to the plate. Bryce hit the ball hard. His first time. Watch how short this swing is. And when I say short, it's just right to the baseball. There's no length in it. It's not a long swing. It's barrel to baseball, backspin created. Michael Taylor is as hot as anybody in baseball right now. Four for last night with the homer. One for two today with the homer. One nothing, Nats. So Bryce Harper. Almost had his 52nd extra base hit of the year. Gregory Polanco gunned him out at second, trying to stretch a first inning single. Ball short hopped the ball, bounced up in the air. Polanco drew a straight line to second base. And Taylor, rather Espinosa, back in. I mean, you may be seeing the emergence of a superstar right now, Michael Taylor. Watching his progression from last year to early this year to post All Star break this year. I mean, what a difference. And Harper missing 97. Espinosa on the move, pitched out and in. And no chances. Chris Stewart couldn't pick it up. Danny Espinosa, his fourth of the year in six attempts. A good jump by Danny Espinosa, but does this take the bat out of Bryce Harper's hands? You could make the argument that the, the ringing single, his first time up, will take it out of his hands, regardless of Espinosa's on first or not. But a good jump and in scoring position. Let's see what Garrett Cole does. Yeah, we're yeah, kind of know. kind of expecting a walk here now that the count. Was two and one on the stolen base. Well, don't forget the guy on deck wants nothing more than to hit a ball hard after his first at bat. Yep. Escobar drilled first time up on a first pitch fastball. Three and one. And Bryce couldn't stop. Like I know they're not going to pitch to me. I'm looking for a hanger. There's the hanger. No, it's not a hanger. I mean, that's what you're thinking up there. If you're Bryce, you're, you're ready to pounce on a mistake. You know what Garrett Cole's doing to you. 42 straight road games on base. Well, Garrett Cole didn't walk Bryce Harper. Michael A. Taylor homers though to put the Nats on top in the top of the third inning. So their right hander struck out the side. Gave up a couple of hits and Michael A. is on fire.
trying to describe that Michael Taylor home run and the swing that he took. Washington DC Lexus dealers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Health System for every home run that Michael Taylor and his teammates hit this year. It's for a wonderful cause, Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. 96 of them now. Nationals hit 152 home runs last year, fourth most in the National League. And they gave up 110, the fewest in all of baseball. Here's Chris Stewart, the catcher. Outside to Stewart, hitting 291 with eight RBIs. He's 33 years of age, been around a long time, parts of five years in the big leagues with the White Sox, Rangers, Yankees, Padres, Giants, Yankees again, and Pittsburgh. Hit 282 here last year. In fact, he hit that same here two years ago, and he's a good offensive catcher with a leadoff hit. Come cheer on the Nats Wednesday, August 5th, Arizona in town. The Jason Worth Chia bet for the first 20,000 fans. So check out hashtag Worth Chia. Follow the Nats on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Get a sneak peek of the stages of the Chia growth. 202-675-NATS, nationals.com for tickets. Bunting opportunity for Garrett Cole, who has five sacrifice bunts this year. Catcher running. We'll see how good of a bunt he has to make. Well, Chris Stewart can run, period. He's a good athlete, so. Garrett Cole got it. Really can handle the bat. We'll see if he gets a job done. That leadoff single is huge down one nothing with a guy that can bunt. Pushes it hard. Robinson thought about it for an instant at second. Got the out to Espinoza. Now Polanco and Marte each have a shot to tie the game. Yeah, I don't think he had a chance, and I think early in the game it's a good decision. Late, and you want to protect the lead? Maybe. But you don't want to throw that one to left field and have the wheels come off at a huge inning. So take the out that's given to you. Don't try to do anything spectacular. And concentrate on these two hitters. I like the play by Robinson. Polanco grounded one to Clint first time. To the outside edge with 88. Desmond keeping the runner close. And a play! Close! And he got back in. That was really tight. Uh, well, I, you know, every time it was a close play, my eyes go right to the dugout. And I saw Randy Nor go to the phone. I saw Matt Williams turn around, whip a UE. So they're going to take a quick look at this. Joe Ross looking in the dugout. He's not getting on the mound. That's a veteran move by a young player. And let's see. Couldn't tell right there. Ross blocked off that angle. Scott Berry, the call. Still looking. Waiting. Ross still waiting. The Joe Ross off the mound thing is interesting here. He's given it some time. I think he thinks they had a chance. Did the tag get his hand though? That's a better look at it. Oh, here we go. Let's play ball. No balls, one strike to Polanco. Up the middle. Charging hard Taylor. They're going to send him. Bare hand pickup. Throw home. Gets by Ramos. And somebody better get the ball because the hitter's going to third base. What a play by Michael Taylor. And if Ramos picks it, he's out. A bare hand play by the national center fielder. A one hop throw right on the money. Maybe a tricky in between hop for Ramos. Let's look at it again. But the throw right into the runner. And watch Taylor, bare hand, gets rid of it right on the money. A little up the line. Yeah, short hop for Ramos. And that was a difference. So an RBI hit, second on the throw, and third on the error given to Michael A. Taylor. 
with Starling Marte in the way of Joe Ross fielding that ball. Joe Ross was back there, and the ball almost hit Marte in the on deck circle. Tie ball game. Each team with three hits infield in, and now Marte takes one. And both fences are getting warned here. So you had Escobar first pitch. Second inning getting drilled and now this one here. Why would you hit somebody to get to McCutcheon. But Chris Conroy had a. Instant decision to make and he thought it was intentional and both dugouts are warned. Yeah, Dave Jouse going crazy in the. Pirates bench right now. And the reason he's going crazy, I'll tell you why, folks. Garrett Cole's game is pitching in. And now that both teams are warned, whatever you think about the situation, it's for those guys down there to handle, not us. But Garrett Cole's a guy who lives on the inner half of the plate. He's an in the wind guy. And now if he hits a guy, the Pirates have a chance to lose their ace in this game. So that warning is huge for both teams, but especially the Pirates, I feel like. That's why I saw the emotion in their dugout. And McCutcheon takes one that misses away because now you're relying on umpires yeah. to think about well was that on purpose I don't know Garrett Cole's out there well if I hit a guy am I getting run. That's a big warning it really is. Swing no. Ball two on the ruling by Gabe Morales. Did bat and Pittsburgh takes the lead. Andrew McCutcheon with his fourth RBI of this series continues to hurt the Nats in this ballpark. Three hits in the inning, an error and a hit batter. Well, just a nice approach right there by Andrew McCutcheon. Not trying to do too much. Got to a 2 0 count instead of thinking three run homer, I'm just going to stay inside the ball. Hit it right back where it came from and drive in one run. Ramirez in the series 0 for 5, struck out first time today. As mentioned last night, a double play guy if you can get a ground ball. In the air to right, Bryce Harper coming in for it. Marte back to the bag, but not going anywhere. Bryce wishes he would. Two outs. For the Achiever and you, PNC Bank, with our minor league report as we continue to track rehab for Worth and Zimmerman. Ryan, four at bats for Potomac against Bowie yesterday. Actually, that's for Harrisburg, right? And then Jason Worth, triple A ball for Syracuse, three for four, a double driving in two. Will we see them in Miami? Anthony Rendon back last night. Had an 0 for 4, but a line out had a sack fly. Here's Jung Ho Gung. Ross struck him out first time. At the off day on Monday, so they get another day of rest. Game on Tuesday. And Jason Worth loves to play in Marlins Park. He loves how deep the outfield is and how fly balls don't go out of there. So that. That'd be a great place for him. Sure. <laughs> you know, people talk about what a big ballpark it, that is. I look out there and I see doubles and triples. So positive, Bob. Yeah. I see buildings here. Doubles and triples and artwork coming our way Tuesday. <laughs> we love it there. At least you know you're playing. Yeah. Whenever you go there. 1 1. That's a great fastball to the inside edge. Gung didn't like it. Nissan will show it. Well, fourth game of the series, I like the approach and the adjustment the Nationals have made to Gung. He's the hottest hitter on the Pirates, and they're really trying to make him aware of the fastball in and then sliders off of that. But they're pounding him here today, and I like it. And after a warning, too. That's front door with a breaking ball, and he couldn't do a thing about it. 
So two runs for the Pirates. Escobar drilled first time up by Garrett Cole. He'll lead off the fourth. I mean, every single game, tailgates, boats, people having a good time. The weather's been perfect. It's been an unbelievable weekend for everybody here in Pittsburgh. It's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo using hashtag Nats Couch Cam, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast that's brought to you by T-Mobile. I want one of those boats. I mean, look, look at all the boats out there. That, that, that one out do. there just past the foul pole cart, I want that one. Can we get Masson to get that for us? I think that could be the Masson yacht. That is nice. They're all out there today. You need a really big boat to see into the ballpark, I feel like, though. Yeah. Tall crow's nest. Here's Escobar. He goes up swinging, hits one to right center. Ball moving away from both outfielders, but Polanco able to get it as it had just enough of that slice to come back to the right fielder. So Escobar, two pitches today, hit by one and almost hit the next one out of here. Yeah, pretty good pass right here, and it was a very aggressive swing as we see from Yunel Escobar every single time he's up, but you made the call perfectly. That had a little inside-out rotation, came right back to Polanco in the gap. Well hit. There's our boat. I think we would call it see you later, right? Just put that on the back. <laughs> on the back and say, keep, there goes the just, boat. If we could afford that, we'd be in it and we'd go that way and it wouldn't say see you later on it. 2 and 0. Oh. There's mine. See dude later. <laughs> there you go. Suddenly, 3 0 to Robinson. Bouncing into a fielder's choice. First time up. Let's see if Clint is given the opportunity to hack on something he might like with that cozy right field area beckoning. Yeah, he got the green light. He hit it the other way, and that's out of play left side. Two run Pirates now, top of the fourth inning. Robinson in this series, two for ten. It's one to center for McCutcheon. They head back up maybe three or four steps. And now Garrett Cole looking for his shutdown inning. Pitching pairings for the Miami series. How about this one? Jordan Zimmerman, Jose Fernandez, 7-10 Tuesday. Doug Fister, Tom Kohler, 7-10 Wednesday. And the Marlins give us a day game for getaway day Thursday. Max Scherzer and former Nat Dan Heron before on to New York for three. So I was thinking about this today. I talking to one of the Pittsburgh writers next door. Kershaw, Grinky, 
Harvey, DeGrom, Syndergaard, Liriano, Burnett, Cole, and then Fernandez coming up in a week and a half's time. No disrespect to Jeff Locke, but not in that class of pitcher. No. I mean, that's the big leagues, though. Like uh, Bryce says, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And I think the Nats have done a nice job keeping that three game lead facing all those pitchers. It could have been a lot worse. 0 2. And a breaking ball away from Ian Desmond, who has struck out on a high heater first time up after Cole got him 0 2. And by the way, the Nats are having some really good at bats against Garrett Cole here. They're striking the ball well. Cole might still be wondering how Michael A. Taylor got down to get that ball and hit it out of the ballpark last inning. He's trying to nibble at the inside corner there. Two two pitch. Desmond can't reach it. Six strikeouts by Garrett Cole in four innings. Joe Ross is going to have to keep this thing two to one for a while. In the major leagues, a place that Michael A. Taylor is proving he belongs. No doubt about it. Bottom of the fourth, Walker Alvarez Stewart, six, seven, eight. For the Pirates who lead 2 1, they've out hit the Nats 4 3. Look at us getting all hip with the montage. I love it. Yeah. Listen to some more of that on the plane tonight. You will not. <laughs> well, that was a major league. So that, might, that might be the first rap to make it on my iPod. All right. Way inside. Two balls, no strikes. Off speed pitch. Walker lined out to Dendecker in left first time up. Through three innings, 37 pitches, 24 strikes for Ross. Kind of a typical outing for Joe. He'll give up base hits because he throws strikes. He pounds the zone. That ball's well hit to center. Taylor going back, watching it. And man, this thing is flying in Pittsburgh this weekend. That's Walker's second home run here. His ninth of the year, and it's 3 1 Pirates. Yeah, run back fastball started in, came right down the middle. Neil Walker has been on the fastball this whole series. 
And Michael Taylor with a few steps toward this one. But as we've seen the first three games, ball flying at PNC this weekend. This ballpark's playing as small as I've ever seen it. Here's Pedro Alvarez. You know what he's thinking. Ross misses away with 92. So the Pirates now 76 home runs on the year. When the Nats came to town, they had 69. Danger count here. On the shift, Espinosa in right field. Alvarez pumping, missing 93, 2 and 1. Ross has given up his first home run in the big leagues. Yeah, right back in the strike zone with the fastball, but keep an eye on the slider. I'm watching him after he throws him go to his pant leg and wipe off his hand. And I don't know if it's such a hot day that he's having trouble with the grip on his slider at this point, but you know, that's his pitch. That's his go to. It's his it's his out pitch. And he's been really holding on to it too long and bouncing it. That's a beauty 84. Fifth strikeout. Alvarez for the second time Mercedes Benz will track it. Well Alvarez laid on the fastball so he starts to swing early here and he gets a slider that essentially acts as a changeup. but didn't do a whole lot except for that Alvarez was way out in front. Well Chris Stewart got their two run rally started last inning when the number eight man in the lineup had a leadoff single. His last 15 starts Stewart is hitting just under 340. That's pretty good backup action from your number two catcher. Who's also thrown out nine base dealers this year. That one has some drop to it, 83. That's a beauty. Gives up a home run right back in the strike zone, strikes the guy out. Now he finds himself in a one two count. Nicely done. Locked him up. Ball might have hit the ground. There were two sounds, but I don't think he tipped it. Two outs, strike out number six. Zach Brown band coming to Nats Park Friday, August 14th. Don't miss the only DC show on their Jekyll and Hyde tour. Great seats still available. Get your tickets today at nationals.com slash Zach Brown band. And the umpire staring at the press box with sound effects during the first pitch of that at bat. Eric Cole can hit. And you have to pitch to him. It's like having nine hitters in there today for the Pirates. He's got a good swing. He's out here the first day, Friday. Or Thursday, actually, after they got back late from the game in Kansas City, and he was one of the only guys hitting on the field. Gets under one to left. So Ross will battle back from the home run with a couple of strikeouts and a fly ball. Nats have to get busy now facing the biggest winner in baseball and down by two.
Head to the top of the fifth inning. Michael A. Taylor doing his thing. Neil Walker going deep as well. Joe Ross, 53 pitches through four innings. Six strikeouts, just one walk. And let's look at Michael A. Taylor's home run. Watch the location of this pitch, folks. Not a bad pitch by Garrett Cole. But Michael Taylor, pretty good low ball hitter, digs it out, drives it the other way. And puts his team on the board one to nothing at the time. His eighth home run of the year and his 39th RBI. Okay, they're all out there. They're waiting for a ball. Wait, and what's the direction? I mean, what, how do you do the traffic? Who's got the right of way there is what I want to know. Yeah. Or did they just all go deathmatch and floor it into each other? <laughs> Maybe they disperse onto their individual kayaks and go after it. Love it. Drop anchor, use the little boat. I, there's one boat's got a little raft behind it there. Yeah, those kayaks are overmatched. I want these right here. That's the one that I want. Oh, late to the party. Late to the party once again. <laughs> Fifth inning here in Pittsburgh. Well, it's great to see the city of Pittsburgh and the surrounding area. Kansas City doing what they're doing. Not to be uh, overlooked, Minnesota, their ball club, seven games over 500 this year and chasing the Royals. Mid size markets that struggled for years and years and making big time comebacks. It's great and, for baseball. And blockbuster trades. I was thinking this on the way over to the ballpark today. How many trade deadline blockbusters have propelled a team to win a World Series? Not just get to the playoffs or win their league. Yeah. But to win a World Series. And I can only come up with a few. I know that lots made about that this time of year. Blockbuster trades. We, we have to get somebody big. And then right. uh, it's the Cody Rosses, I feel like, and the Pat Burles and the the waiver deadline, post waiver deadline trades that seem to have the most effect. I think Ricky Henderson to the Blue Jays comes to mind as a World Series winner. I know Kurt Schilling went to the Diamondbacks in 2000, but they ended up winning it in 2001. So Randy Johnson went to the Astros and went 10 and 1, but they went to the NLCS. But I'm talking about the blockbuster yeah. trade on the trade deadline that's followed by a World Series championship. And I feel like it doesn't happen very often, if very often, I guess. Fastball up, it's 2 and 2. I asked Mike Rizzo by the cage Friday. If he expected the deadline to be really busy this year, he said, I, I really do think the run up to the trading deadline is going to be very busy. He said, I, I don't see us as being real active. We're just trying to get our guys back. But the general consensus around baseball, when they mention the Nats, first thing that's mentioned is bullpen. But Jason Veritek to the Red Sox, they won it after that trade, and he had a wonderful career there. But I don't know if that was a blockbuster at the time. Yeah. And I just think it's overrated. Well, look at Cespedes in that series of deals last year with Oakland. I mean, getting Samarja, getting Jason Hamill, Cespedes leaves, and everything fell apart for the A's. Well, and then they gave up Addison Russell for Samarja, and, and Addison yeah. Russell turned into a great young player for the Cubs, and, and just giving up your youth. Yeah, now Cespedes isn't even with the Red Sox. Anymore. Although this Johnny Cueto thing <laughs> looks pretty good right now, doesn't it? Looks pretty big. Yeah. 3 2 to Ramos, Den Decker on deck, top of the sixth. Down and in, Wilson Ramos can't get it. Strikeout number seven for Cole, and Wilson Ramos is one for ten in this series. Yeah, look at this chart. Up, down, away, in, and that's typical Garrett Cole. He's not going to sit in one zone with one pitch very often, unless you just flat out show him you can't hit that pitch. All four quadrants with the fastball and throw the off speed whenever he wants. Seven strikeouts, no walks. Of course, I have a friend who's a Tiger fan that tells me, you know, in 1988, we did make the playoffs after getting Doyle Alexander, but they gave up John yeah, Smoltz. Hall of Famer. <laughs> but, but making the playoffs is one thing. I'm talking about winning a World Series because yeah. that's the goal for all the teams that are going to give up some young players to get. A front line player. And how often does it work out? And Decker getting another good swipe at that one, one and two. 
Of course, speaking of uh, Scherzer and the Tigers, David Price obtained a couple of years ago. They haven't made it. In the American League, four teams are in the in it in the East. Two in the Central, but the Tigers are in the wild card race. And then the West, Angels, Astros, Rangers, and Mariners within shouting distance. So who are buyers and who are sellers? One two with one out. Den Decker into center. Ball falling. Into the glove of Gung, who went out there and made a fine over the shoulder catch. Two outs, pitcher next. A nice play. Came over his right shoulder to his left side and probably took a peek at Andrew McCutcheon to make sure he was okay. Nice play by Gung. Solid baseball player for the Pirates. He's been impressive all weekend. Cole facing the opposing pitcher, Ross, who battled him pretty well to 3 2 before striking out back in the Third inning. That was right before the Michael A. Taylor two out home run. This one to the shortstop and Gung on the charge. Garrett Cole cruising now. He has retired seven straight since the Danny Espinoza. Base hit halfway through. Pirates 3 1. Minor league baseball players live the life, make tons of money, but for many, probably even most, that's very far from the place. Clint Robinson told me that the year that he won the Triple Crown in Double A in 2010, he made just under $9,000 after taxes, and salaries like that force many migrant leaders to get second jobs in the offseason. Robinson worked as a UPS driver and helper during the holidays, working 13-hour shifts. Tanner Roark had a handful of warehouse jobs which left him on his feet 10 hours a day. He also had a job put, putting together garden tools at one point. He'd still try and train when he got the chance, playing catch indoors and going to the gym, but that work schedule made his big league pursuit tougher. Roark said that that type of work built character. It made him the man that he is today. But a lot of fans don't realize the financial grinds that minor leaguers go through, forcing them to get second jobs and really put a strain on them as they try and build their way up to the big leagues. Yeah, great stuff, Dan. By the way, that was Tanner Roark playing catch with the outfielders, not warming up. Just want you to know. The seventh year in the minors in AAA I made $13,000. That was my yearly income with a kid. First check in the big leagues. For two weeks, more than I made the entire year in AAA. Playing for a chance, you're playing for the love of the game, and you're playing a kid's game and getting paid a little bit. It's not the worst life in the world, let me tell you. Wake up at noon and play baseball every day in the minor leagues. You just don't get paid until you get here. 
Polanco RBI hit last time up. That hits the difference in the game and then McCutcheon added another. Actually that tied the game McCutcheon gave them the lead with another hit later in that game. And then Walker the home run leading off the fourth. For Joe Ross 53 pitches 34 strikes. Through three. And this ball jacked out to left center Taylor back. He's got it. Michael A. Taylor with speed. Jumping ability. And then squeezing it. Looked like that ball was by him when he caught it. Well, he kind of took a flat route to the baseball and realized it had an extra gear. And he has makeup speed and the length and the reach is what makes this play. And we've seen this a few times with Taylor. See, so he kind of goes flat to that ball, realizes it's hit, makes the correction. And then the long limbs is why he makes that play. We've seen him do it to the glove side. Now he does it across his body Michael Taylor showing that he's got as much range as anybody in center field and Joe Ross loves the effort. What a play again by Michael Taylor. What a reaction by Polanco. Yeah now he knows what it feels like when some guys hit balls to the Pittsburgh outfield. Here's Starling Marte base hit hit by a pitch. Things tend to happen quickly when Ross is on the mound. He's on the attack. 1 1 here. Marte, five hits in the series. And a bouncer left side. Escobar able to wait for that second hop. Two down, and McCutcheon will bat with the bases empty. Come out to the ballpark on Thursday, August 27th. It's Pet Calendar Day. Nats take on the Padres. Special ticket purchase. You can receive the Nationals player pet calendar. They all dress up like pets. It's awesome. Features photos of your favorite Nats player. Actually, with their own pets, that's Jason Wood dog right there, Magnus. Small animal. For details and to purchase this special ticket, visit nationals.com slash pet calendar. Perfect day for McCutcheon with a walk and an RBI single. That ball foul. Hey. When you see guys that convert from infield to outfield, th there's a couple of things that always happen. They get good jumps, number one, because they're used to playing infield their whole life and the ball getting on them quick and being ready for the baseball. And number two, they're very accurate with their throws because they've thrown to targets their whole life, whether it be a first baseman or a second baseman on double play. So with Michael Taylor, you're seeing good jumps. He used to be a shortstop. And you're seeing a good arm and an accurate arm because as a shortstop, you have to throw to a target your whole life. And you see that with guys that convert. One ball, one strike. Out of play. It's one of the reasons, among others, that I miss watching teams take infield and outfield before a ball game, which hasn't been around for it seems like forever now. Because FP, you see a lot of guys with really strong arms, but how accurate are most guys? Well, they work on throwing to second base and third base during batting practice. They rarely work on throwing to the plate. It's a Ball cut off by Escobar. Outstanding play. You know Escobar. He has played some serious defense this year, as well as gathering 107 hits. Michael A. Taylor takes an extra base it away again.
As we head to the top of the sixth inning, Pirates ahead, and how about some clutch hitters? Pop the clutch, I love it. You know, hitters batting averages with runners in scoring position. And those are the big boys, right? Freeman, Arenado, Goldschmidt, Posey, McCutcheon, and then that guy in the middle, Michael A. Taylor, 404 with runners in scoring position. I would say he's hot. Yeah, he gets there by going 484 his last 17 games. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star Sales event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Michael A. leads off the sixth. I think if you hit a solo home run that you're already in scoring position and that should count toward that. <laughs> yeah it can be a deceptive stat because sometimes uh, a base hit with a guy at second doesn't drive in the run over to grab it and there's Marte. So outfielders robbing each other in this series. One out on a ball well hit by Michael A. Taylor into the three o'clock hour here PNC Park. Some very welcome cloud cover for the fans here on an 86 degree afternoon. BCFP DK here with you. Day off tomorrow. We'll join you from Marlins Park Tuesday night. Jose Fernandez and Jordan Zimmerman. Middle stop on the road trip that takes us to New York next weekend. Danny Espinosa, a strikeout, a base hit, and a steal. Trying to get aboard for Harper. Cole's command is really impressive. First five innings, 66 pitches, 45 strikes. Nearly everything on a corner or an edge. Inside out swing by Danny out of play. But if you'd have to rank the dominating pitchers and that's a face recently, I know Cole's numbers are there, but just not what he's doing today. It, it's good. But I'm not seeing Kershaw or Drinky good right now. I've seen right. some really good swings by Nat hitters with nothing to show. Okay, Escobar, Robinson, Taylor with a bullet, some hard ground balls hit in the infield. But like you said, Carve, he's pitching. He's moving it around, mixing it up nice. Yeah, and it's not like he's getting tremendous run support. I mean, his ERA, 2.31, fourth in the league. So he manages to be stingy even when you're getting some contact. He goes upstairs with the fastball. And you know, he knows who's on deck. He does not want to walk the number two hitter here. Not up by two. Big pitch coming. Three two breaking ball popped up left side Aramis Ramirez two outs Harper with the bases empty he had the Nats first hit of the box score today other hits the Taylor two out homer third inning followed by an Espinosa single and the Nats haven't had a hit since starting with a Harper strikeout in the third he's retired nine straight. It's a breaking ball that he fouled down to his foot. time Rice in the series four for 13 two walks and 
That'll stand him up. Two and one. Cole not happy with that pitch. Trying to telling you he was trying to throw that for a strike and there was no purpose to it. Harper big rip at 95. Nissan with the entire at bat. See all over. That's what he does. In, out, up, down. Harper jammed on a breaking ball that got in on his hands. And Garrett Cole, I guess, thought Alvarez had an easy play. He never made an attempt to cover. So Bryce Harper retired. The Nats go one, two, three. That's ten straight for Garrett Cole. Race to the bag. It's one of the newer ballparks that makes seating for the disabled available and comfortable. This is our ADA fan cam initiative. And it's a reminder that today is the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So we want everyone to know they're welcome in our ballparks around baseball. You will be accommodated, you will be comfortable, and you are just as entitled to a good seat as anybody. What a good anniversary we celebrated today. Bottom of the sixth inning. Ross back to work and a ball ripped to Escobar from Ramos Ramirez, who's 0 for 7 in his return to the Pirates. Bucks box. Two runs on three hits in the third. Started by the number eight hitter, the catcher Chris Stewart. Polanco and McCutcheon, the RBIs. And the other blow, the Neil Walker leadoff home run straight away center. In the fourth. It's been 3-1 ever since. Since that home run, Ross has retired seven straight. On the other side, Garrett Cole, 10 in a row. Big swing and a big miss on a breaking ball to Gung. Well, it looks like the Nats have kind of figured out Gung, and they've really pounded him in with the fastball. And you see that first swing, he was looking for that fastball in, cheating to get to it, and he got the slider. And he's seen nothing but fastballs in and sliders that have started right at him and broke over the plate from Joe Ross here today. 0 for 2, couple strikeouts. Yeah, and it's interesting, FP. I'm looking at the entire series here. He has one hit to center, the other four were all pulled to left. So pound a guy inside to get him off the plate and then drop a few breaking balls away. That's a good heater. Two balls, two strikes. He has struck out twice today. One for five against Joe Ross.
Well, if he starts that slider right at him right here and breaks it back over, if he can command that pitch, control it, he's got him for strike three in a 3 2 count. There, Tried it. there it is, and that was a check swing. Got him looking on that pitch three innings ago. Way out ahead on that slight piece. Busted his bat with that one. <laughs> one slider front door after another two outs. Well good execution of the game plan. The Jung Ho Gung. Let's check out Neil Walker with some Geico highlights last time up. The ball down with a lot of plate drove it out to center field for. His ninth home run of the year. All of them from the left side. He's had two good swings today and lined out hard to Dendecker heading toward the gap in the left back in the second. Danny Espinosa, a couple of steps onto the outfield grass. This guy's been solid for the Pirates, 271 last year. Career betting average coming into the season, 273. He's right in that range again. Off speed, a beauty. Good slider. Funny, the Suns went behind the clouds of Joe Ross's slider is as good as it's been all day. Maybe not sweating as much now. Temperatures dropped a little bit too, and there's some rain on the way. Neil Walker, popular guy here, Pittsburgh native. First rounder back in 04. His dad, Tom, pitched in the big leagues, early 70s. For the Expos, Tigers, Cardinals, and Angels from 72 to 77. O2 pitch again. He had a season four years ago when only Robinson Cano and Dustin Pedroia had more RBIs in. The major leagues as a second baseman. Drove in 83 that year. One ball, two strikes. Got him. Ross still pulling out some good stuff here in the sixth inning. Now he's retired nine in a row. Seven strikeouts on the day. Now he needs his offense to wave a few out of here. What's up, dude?
Well, clouds over Pittsburgh on this Sunday afternoon. We're going to the seventh. Nats need to break through soon. Cole, 10 in a row. This is interesting. He's thrown 79 pitches. Ross, 78. Cole, 52 strikes. Ross, 51. Nats have had some good at bats against Garrett Cole. I'm going to try to string some together here in the seventh. Escobar 0 for 1 hit by a pitch and a fly ball to deep right over to the right side where Alvarez was playing way off the line 11 straight. All right, we promised you earlier in the game. Here's your T-Mobile fan photo. All right, Nats Park. Good looking couple. Thanks guys. And you tweet your strongest fan photo hashtag Nats couch cam and you just might see yourself in the right corner of a television set on a Nats broadcast soon. That is a strong fan photo. Clint Robinson 0 for 2. That ball hit well to the left center gap. McCutcheon can only chase it to the deepest part out there, the nook where it's 410 feet away. Lint Robinson third hit of this series. He got inside of that ball tailing away from Andrew McCutcheon. There was no way he was getting to it. So it settles in the north side notch the biggest part of this ballpark. And another good at bat by a Nationals hitter against Garrett Cole. Good swing one out double. Ian Desmond trying to at least make this a one run deficit and who knows. That was the first base hit since the Espinosa single third inning. Ian has struck out swinging twice. One for six career against Cole. Up there hacking. Jeep takes his inside the numbers. Guys who've homered in each game of a four game series. You remember that series with Adam LaRoche in 2012. I think the Nets hit 15 or 16 home runs in that four game series. It was a crazy number. I might be wrong. It might yeah. be no, more you're than right. that. You're right. John Peterson's done it this year. That was when Bo Porter wanted to fight the whole Cubs team. <laughs> One man against about 40 approaching the third base dugout. And Jamie Quirk. It was a bean brawl. Cubs were tired of giving up Tater, so they just started drilling Nats players. Good times. Yeah, they did hit 15 in that series. Cole has been tough on Desmond today. Target jumping outside. Desmond drills it to right. Polanco playing pretty shallow and a one hopper to him. So Robinson has to stay at third. And we'll see if the Nats can keep the line moving now with Ramos coming in. Well, that's what you're talking about. Stringing some of these good at bats together. Ian Desmond hit it way too hard to score Clint Robinson or anybody for that matter. That was a bolt. Little inside out swing one hopper to Polanco down by two Bob Henley does a nice job of holding Clint Robinson because that ball hit just too hard and now Wilson Ramos has a chance to do some damage here make this at least a one run game without getting a hit. Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage to the mound. When the Nats came to town Thursday Pirates had a team ERA of 2.99. Up to 307 now, still second in the league. But they have done some damage against the Pirates rotation. Big at bat coming with Ramos now. And Wilson has to get something to elevate. Well you'd think the Pirates are going to try to jam Wilson Ramos. They, they've done a, a decent enough job with him this series with the fastball in. 
Wilson thinking about going up the middle or to right field. That's his strength. So that's the battle you're about to see right now. Obviously Cole wants a ground ball, but they should throw the fastball in and the off speed away. And then Desmond's been running more lately. That's have as well as a team. One way to stay out of a double play, but you better make it. So I'm a big fan of the four game series. I, I feel like by the fourth game you throw all the scouting reports out the window. And what have you done to me in this series? Mm -hmm. And you should have a good idea as a pitcher if you pay attention by the fourth game and as a hitter if you pay attention to what the team's doing to you and what you're going to do when you take them out as a pitcher. The strategy for game four of a series I think so much more interesting to me than a three game set because. That extra game makes a huge difference. Ramos and the Nats wanted anything but that. The Pirates lead the major leagues with 115 double plays turned and they couldn't have called room service and ordered one any better. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Hyundai. Bill Mazeroski between third and home waving the cap after his famous homer back in 60. Authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. 3 1 Pirates as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Seffrey Miller moment. We promised you earlier in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And there's been some great defense here today behind Joe Ross. We're going to show you a few plays. Wilson Ramos with a great throw on the money to get Starling Marte in the first inning. And how about this play by Michael A. Taylor? Going in the gap. Robin a hit. You know, Escobar has been as good as anybody at third base. He's played deeper recently. He's got the more baseballs. He's making great plays all over the place. So some leather being thrown at the Pirates here tonight. And that's just waiting for that one big hit against Garrett Cole and it just hasn't happened yet. Tuesday night quite a pitching matchup in Miami. Jordan Zimmerman eight and five three thirty ERA is one seven of ten against the Marlins. Jose Fernandez four starts in his return from injury. He's three and oh with a two point seven seven and here's one for you in his career at Marlins Park. He is fourteen and oh with an ERA of 1.17. He's due. 6.30 p.m. he is for a clunker. That's extra mass and two Tuesday night. Quite a matchup.
Remember John Lennon's Major League debut back in 2007? Nope. We do. July 26th at Philadelphia. He got Chase Utley. That would break Utley's hand and put him on the DL. Next batter, Ryan Howard. Rookie lets a couple pitches get away, and Hunter Wendelstedt throws him out of the game. Now, Manny Acta, Nats manager at the time, was on the field for about a minute arguing him. And then when he went to the mound to get a relief pitcher out there, he kept it up, and Wendelstedt threw out Manny as well. Even Chase Utley admitted, I don't think he was throwing at me. And that was kind of a big duh from all of us. So here's Matt Thornton taking over after six after six pretty solid innings by Joe Ross. That's dramatic in your big league debut to get thrown out. I'm surprised John Lennon recovered from that at all. So this is the part of the bullpen that we've talked about a lot the down by one down by two behind bullpen and Matt Williams going to Matt Thornton here trying to keep it a two run deficit give the Nats a chance in the eighth and the ninth. Swing and a miss on a big breaking ball. Pedro Alvarez sits down and he's 0 for three today with three punch outs. And you are beginning to see the Matt Thornton outings be a lot like Sean Burnett. And you remember we used to talk about it as we look at Toyota Case for Kids. $37 donation by DC area Toyota dealers to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. And the word that comes to mind is uneventful. Yeah. Seems to be so professional, goes out there and gets outs, and that's all his skipper wants. Yeah, Thornton's last appearance was at home in the game against the Mets on Wednesday. Ian Desmond's going to take charge on this Chris Stewart pop up. Two quick outs, and here comes Garrett Cole. He should get a very nice greeting from his fans. I mean, he hasn't been overpowered. He's been getting some key outs in key situations. I, I guess you could say he's pitching, but. Remember a Strasburg Cole matchup here. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, and it was just 97, 98 from both guys all night long, and maybe a more mature Garrett Cole now is just kind of working the ball around, manipulating it, and getting ground balls when he needs it. Yeah. Or you know, you see him one time, small sample size. Pretty impressive. 10 and 7 his rookie year, 19 starts. Last year, 11 and 5, 22 starts, and now he's working. On a possibility of being 14 and 4 at the end of this game. He's going to stroke one to right, but Harper's playing shallow on the off side. One, two, three for Matt Thornton in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Dendecker, then a pinch hitter, and then Taylor. That's down by two.
to you by your local BMW centers. Pirates three, Nationals one, six outs with which to work. And we go to the top of the eighth inning. Garrett Cole, 85 pitches, 58 strikes. They cheer on the Peanuts as they begin the second half push and fight for a playoff spot. Visit the Fitz August 1st and 2nd for Goonies Night and Mike Cameron Hall of Fame induction night. For all your ticket and promotional information, visit PotomacNationals.com. Sean Rodriguez for defense. Close ball game. Pedro Alvarez has 15 errors on the year. So the Pirates bring in Rodriguez to play first base. Anthony Rendon on deck for the Nats to hit for Matt Thornton. By the way, Thornton, eight pitches, eight strikes. Nice and boring. You know, with relie the relievers, Carp, they should have some sort of category for guys that come in with a two-run deficit or less, meaning a yeah, tie game, one run down, two runs down, and keep the game right where it's at. That's a true hold for me. And maybe there is a stat out there. I don't know. Maybe somebody could help me on Twitter, but... When you come in the ball game, it's a two run deficit or less and you leave the ball game and it's the same. It yeah. doesn't increase. There's so much value in that as a relief pitcher in today's game. Keeping it right where it is. Yeah, and they only give holds when you're ahead. Right. But I, I'm with you. A hold could be a big stat. Let's say if you're a run down. Yeah. You know, maybe two. I don't know if they'd go for that, but if you're, it's a one run game, why not? Yeah. Dan Decker takes the backdoor breaking ball low. Casey Jansen for the Nats, bottom of the eighth. It's a big at bat right here, trying to get the tie and run of the plate in the form of Anthony Rendon. Then Taylor. Pass ball up and Dendecker late. And for the Pirates, Tony Watson, who's their eighth inning guy. If Cole runs into problems here, that may be if it's a long inning, thinking about Bryce Harper, four hitters away. Hasn't been behind in counts much today. Dendecker right side, Walker right there. One out. Next up, Anthony Rendon. He is one for five against Cole Career with the base on balls. Back in the big leagues last night with an 0 for 4 to sack fly. Struck out three times, lined out to right, but got the Nats a big run. Cole trying to go eight innings for the third time this year. Hasn't had a complete game, but he's gone at least six innings 17 times now in his 20 starts. He's gone at least seven, 11 times. Previously went eight here against Cleveland and earlier this year into the ninth inning against the Mets. Ball cracked up the middle by Rendon. Welcome back to the hit column, Anthony. And the Nats have one on one out, and here comes Michael A. Taylor. Well, did a nice job of laying off the first two pitches, getting to a 2 0 count, gets a fastball right down the middle and drills it right back to where it came from. And now Michael A. Taylor, who is as hot as anybody, represents a tie and run for the Nats. Game on. Tried him in last time, hit a bolt to left. Tried him down and away, hit a home run to right center. I don't know what Garrett, Gold, Garrett Cole does right here to Michael Taylor. See where he tries. He tried 99 is where he tried. <laughs> wow. Haven't seen that all day from Cole. Double nines. Well, uh, the tank. Younger version of uh, a Scherzer type pitcher going into closer mode here. Huh? Well, he's facing a guy that has handled him today. And the 0-1, Michael locked up on that breaking ball. Now a big-time battle begins. 
geared up for that 99, got the slider. D8 and with that short stroke got a piece of it. He's a horse. 116 pitches in seven innings at Atlanta, June 7th. 108 his last time out at Kansas City earlier this week. And Michael A. Taylor just able to get a foul tip on that breaking ball. It's a good foul ball. It's a BG sack, staying alive. O2 oh, pitch again. Front door breaking ball. Taylor turned on it. That ball was about five feet foul when it slammed off the railing. Garrett Cole doesn't know what to do right now. He's covered the fastball. He's covered the slider. And he leaves the slider on over the plate. And Michael Taylor just a hair quick. And he thought he had himself a double. And we would have watched Anthony Rendon run right there if this was fair. And you think he'd go back to that 99 if he has it in the tank. Just try to elevate it and see if he'll chase out of the zone. He's got some pitches to play with ahead in the count 0 2. Good take by Michael A. Nationals have more hits than the Pirates, six over five. Can't get that one. Two outs. First strikeout since the fifth inning, number eight on the day. Mercedes Benz will track it. Well, good battle right there. The seventh pitch goes Garrett Cole's way, and he was going that slider away. Michael Taylor took a few and tried to foul that one off, too, but a nice fight by Taylor and a good pitch by Garrett Cole to win the battle. Here's Danny Espinosa. One for three today, two for 11 career against Cole. Harper on deck. Could be Garrett Cole's last hitter. I don't think Anthony Rendon's going anywhere down by two. Coming off a quad strain, but maybe Cole felt like he had to keep him close. Pitch tying one of the batter's box. 97 moving away from Danny Espinosa. Well, Danny Espinosa with 10 home runs on the year shouldn't see anything middle in. If Garrett Cole goes in there, probably not the best idea. You see the first two pitches, 95, mid 90s, sinking away from Espinosa. He's going to make him beat him out to left center field. Look how close that fence looks. Actually, was going in there. Two one with two outs. Espinosa with a great swing to left field. Huge. Bryce Harper coming up. Tony Watson's been warmed up. And that should do it for Garrett Cole. Here comes Clint Hurdle. 
And Bryce Harper going to see a left-hander. Great at bat by Danny Espinosa to get the game to Bryce Harper representing the go-ahead run. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is about to get really interesting. Garrett Cole does not walk a batter today. Strikes out eight. He gives up seven hits. And the Nats are very much alive. The crowd roaring. And a call to the bullpen package by the UPS store. Your one-stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Watson and Harper. Watson tough customer from the left side uses that fastball yeah but look at the breaking ball 4% of the time this year so Bryce Harper is going to see a fastball here it's a pitch he used to feature 10% of the time to lefties last year he doesn't throw it very often so fastball change up fastball average in 94 and very rarely you see lefties throw lefties change ups but you got to figure Bryce is going to see one of those sometime in the sequence so here we go Buckle up. Bryce Harper versus Tony Watson. 105 ERA in this ballpark this year. Bryce one for three on the day. And there's the 94 right in there. Chance to reach that. Bryce not looking for the slider. We just showed you 4% of the time he hasn't thrown it much. This one a good one at 85. See that, you wonder why he doesn't throw it. One ball game in the balance here. Eighth inning, two outs. Harper got a ball to pull. Right side, race to the bag, and Watson gets there. That's why they put Sean Rodriguez in for defense. What a play by Sean Rodriguez. That ball was hit hard, and he made it look simple. Bryce Harper hit this ball right on the nose and watched the in-between hop that Rodriguez gets. He was playing no double, so he had a long way to go for it. Got a nasty hop. Perfect feed and a hustling Bryce Harper thrown out. What a play.
Weather forecast that gives you the three degree guarantee. Get the area's most accurate forecast. First alert weather only on WUSA 9. 3 1 Pirates, it remains. Bottom of the eighth, Casey Jansen now trying to do that hold thing in a two run scenario that we talked about earlier. Fastball 88, slider 83. He'll cut the fastball at 87. Curveball and change to go with it. Still uh, marveling at that play by Sean Rodriguez. That was not an easy play. He was standing on the line because the tie and run was on first base. So playing a no doubles defense in the infield guarding the line. And he went about three steps for that ball and it kind of hopped up at the end and bit him. But he stayed soft into a dive and a perfect feed right on the money with the game on the line. That's as good as it gets. And that's why he was in the game. Casey Jansen favor. Facing Gregory Polanco robbed on a spectacular play by Michael A. Taylor last time up on the 0-2. He's done in three pitches. Casey Jansen is finding his groove right now. Watch how far he has to go. Look where he's starting at the top of the screen. So he takes about three or four steps and that last hop bounced up and into a dive. That's not easy to stay soft on your backhand side like that. So a tricky hop that he managed nicely and a perfect feed. That was at least a one run game. Yeah. He doesn't make that play. Balls down near the corner, and Espinosa is at least on third. Harper would be at second. Strike call to Starling Marte. I think if you're playing games at home watching the Nats play, you have to get a cup of coffee and drink it when Casey Jansen pitches. <laughs> just run out or to maybe a, have it when he's warming up so you'll be ready. Just run out to the Starbucks real quick and get yourself a cup of coffee. I have mine right now. It, it enhances all the movement. Two balls, one strike. Inside out swing and a fly ball to right. Bryce Harper for the second out. And now McCutcheon and here's Dan with more on Casey Jansen. Bob as you guys have been mentioning Casey Jansen's been fantastic lately. He's now retired 17 of the last 19 batters he's faced with nine strikeouts in there. I was talking to him recently about what's been going so well for him. He said he just has a different energy when he's pitching in high leverage situations which he's gotten a lot more of recently a former closer. He thrives in clutch situations and sees a slight uptick in sharpness and velocity in those spots. He hates to admit that when the margin is greater, he doesn't have that, but that's what he thrives on. Strike one. He's been ahead of everybody. McCutcheon, third man up in the city. I just think that, and he just joined the party late. He's getting stronger, and you're seeing the real guy. Starting the season on the DL is no fun. And McCutcheon to right center. Bryce Harper eyeing it. Ball coming back to him and then Taylor there to make the call. Good communication by the young outfielders in the gap. So here we go. Top nine Escobar 107 hits then Robinson and Desmond.
Men do up top of the ninth, down by two. Follow the Nationals wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment within the game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Rally hat on, ready to rock. Mark Melanson got his 31st save of the year. Right here on Friday night, his 101st career. So he's 31 out of 32 this year. Yeah, lots of cut fastballs all around 92, 93. Mix in an occasional slider with it. Actually, an easier at bat for a right hander than a left hander. For the Nats, it'll be. Righty, lefty, righty, Escobar, Robinson, Desmond. Yudel Escobar is two for five career against him. He got Robinson to bounce into a double play two nights ago. And Ian Desmond is one for three career against the right hander who leads Rosenthal by one, Storin by two atop the National League with San Diego's Craig Kimbrell in there and the Mets, Jerris Familia. And the reason it's easier for right handers against the cut fastballs, it, it, it almost acts like a slider and right handers are used to hitting stuff that's going away from them. So it'll have a tendency to give you a chance to hit the ball the other way where lefties it really comes in on you. Bores in on your hands. It's a little bit more difficult against a cutter as good as Melanson's. So Rivero and uh, Storen throwing based on what happens offensively here. Escobar 0 for 2 today 3 for 7 in the series. Goes up hacking, pops it up. Foul ground. Rodriguez. Next up, Robinson, one for three with a double. Quite a pitching matchup Tuesday night. Jordan Zimmerman and Jose Fernandez. Shift is on for Robinson. And by the way, it, it's worthy to note that Ross, Thornton, and Jansen retired the final 15 Pittsburgh hitters in this game today. That's a hold. Hold them, guys. Inside to Clint, 2 0. And the Dodgers just got two in the top of the ninth to tie it in New York. How about, <laughs> How about that? that? And that's got to be Familia. They tried to get a four out save. Terry Collins said he should have tried that in D.C. the other day. But the Nats came back and victimized Bobby Parnell. But he used him in a 7-2 to two, two game the day before. Maybe today will be the worst loss ever. Now it's a battle for Clint Robinson. Two balls, two strikes. Big at bat trying to get a hot hit knee and Desmond up to the plate, represent the tie and run. Four sellouts in this weekend. Hats off to all of you who came over here from D.C. 3 2 with one out. Lynn Robinson strikes out on the ball down and in. Well, it's just a cutter. It disappears underneath your hands. Robinson, when he had to swing, thought that was a strike all the way. It broke out of the zone late. Here's Ian Desmond. He's got to stay alive here. Get it to Wilson Ramos. Great swing with that in mind last time as he took it to right field. As mentioned earlier, one for three career against Melanson. 
off the end of the bat. Race to first. Pirates win three out of four. Nats go very quietly in the top of the ninth inning. And in two hours and 18 minutes.